Hey pups, RB here. Since the last two VeggieTales reviews with Lair Boy in the Fifth from Outer Space and Where's God When I'm Scared were received so positively, and I had a feeling everyone will be excited to see more reviews of some veggie classics prior to Jonah. If everyone else wants me to do more VeggieTales reviews, including ones involving the cartoon adventures of Larry Boy, be sure to let me know in the comments. Unfortunately, I won't review 321 Penguins. While the show itself was just as popular and somewhat well known as VeggieTales, I don't really have any opinions on it or watch the show enough to really get a good grasp on how to review it. Also, I'm not counting the sing-along releases of the details because those are a different category on their own in my opinion. That being said, on with the review. After the first veggie episode was released on VHS in 1993 of December, just in time for the holidays, it had positive reviews, critiques, and was very well received and had high hopes for more episodes. Major shocker there for Big Idea. The business skyrocketed until the bankruptcy of Jonah. Phil, Mike, and the rest of the team had to really hustle to get, get the second episode out. Unfortunately for that, it was a bit of a downgrade in comparison to the first episode. And by a bit, I mean just a downgrade entirely. That being said, let's get into the episode itself. Going to the countertop, Bob and Larry introduced the show in a different way. Not with a letter. But with a question from a TV friend Bob ran into on his way to the bowling league, Marco, named after a friend of Phil before the days of VeggieTales, having a question why he has to forgive, basically his baby sister making him mad and saying sorry, and his mom saying he has to forgive her. This leads Larry into telling the story of the Graves of Wrath, the Larry the Cucumber edition of the story. Wouldn't be surprised if it suddenly became a best-selling children's book. As the story starts, we meet four new characters. The Graves as they sing their theme song. Here's a clip to introduce them better. Basically, these grapes are very sour. It's hard enough to even scare one of the trees into jumping into a lake and to swim away. I think, at least that's what I hope for. And then they hit a tree stump in the road, which causes this to happen. Hey, what you do that for? I didn't do it, you did, you big puffman. I did not, you taco salad rabbit no. Did you get two casserole head from Mental Loaf, Iguana Boy? Jeez! Chill, Rosie, chill! Now, Rose, apologize to your brother! Huh? What for? Well, you know he just turned 18 years old. Yeah? So? So that would make him a casserole head, pimento loaf iguana man! Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Cabbage nose Elvis puppy. Ah, uh -huh. Cabbage nose Elvis pit bull. Or bulldog. Which one is bigger and tougher? Rosie then notices Junior. And the graves make the conclusion that since he is no grape, but a cheese-headed bean boy. Ooh. Yeah, that. Junior then corrects them, and none of the corrections about him being an asparagus and having a yellow hat and not cheese, he throws his hat off, causing the grapes to laugh and make fun of him for his hairdo. That to this day does not make sense to me. Don't those grapes know it's not nice to make fun of people? Well, that's just it, Bob. They didn't know how bad it made Junior feel. Well, it's cheapers, Larry. I agree with Bob. Well, cheapers, Larry. That being said, Junior's dad hears the commotion and. Ooh, grapes. <laughs> that's our favorite part of this episode. Ooh, grapes. <laughs> okay, okay, seriously, though. Junior's dad wonders what the, all the racket is about, and Junior tells his dad what happened. The graves confirm that Junior is telling the truth, and his dad confronts them and lectures them. The graves apologize, and Junior's dad tells Junior, well, I'll let Larry explain. Junior's dad explained to him that when someone says they're sorry for hurting you, and they really mean it, we need to forgive them. That way we all feel better. Yep, that's it. Junior forgives the graves, and they're about to go inside for dinner. Now, what do you kids have to say to Junior? 
Whew, I'm glad that's over. With Tom and Rose apologizing once again, Junior forgives. What? what? Uh, Larry? Help! Once again, Junior forgave them. Are you serious? I'm supposed to forgive them again after what they just did to me? To make a long story short, Junior rants and vents out his emotions of his name being made fun of and getting hurt in a cartoonish manner. Larry asks if Tom and Rosie are really sorry, which they are, and says to Junior that when someone is forgiven, it means God, too, is forgiving when someone is sorry, and we should do the same. Which begs the following question. Well, how many times am I supposed to forgive them? This leads to Bob and Larry to ask Cordy the same question, which leads to the first verse of the episode. This is probably the only episode where we have two verses, but I could be wrong. Correct me if I am. This is all prior to the Jonah VeggieTales movie, so yeah. Which is, I tell you not seven, but 70 times seven. Matthew 18, 22. Now, can I just say, I may not be the greatest math whiz, but I used to be back in my school days, but... Um, do you know what 70 times seven is? Nope. How about you? Nope. Um, guys, I know what it is. Well, does anybody know what 70 times 7 is? Me! I do! I know! Well, let's see, I remember from college it was, uh, why are I, oh. Hello! Is anyone listening to me? Oh, is it two? Or maybe seven? Four hundred and ninety! Ooh! I quit. Just kidding! First math lesson in my childhood. Multiplication, too. No wonder I used to be math was as a kid. With that, Junior forgives the grapes again. And the grapes are now the grapes of math. Well, everyone was very excited about the new name, but it was time for Junior to go inside and eat supper. So, with the sun setting in the west and Rosie happily quoting the quadratic equation in the back seat, the grapes of wrath, I mean math, <laughs> drove off to share their niceness with the rest of the world. The end. Wow, that was great, Larry. But, um, are you sure that's how the story goes? Oh, yeah. With that, the story ends happily. And we get the silly song! Hey, kids, have you ever been bad? Hey, this isn't a silly song. The forgive of Manic was a bit created by Phil and Mike. Who didn't believe the silly song with Larry bit would be as popular as it was when they released Where's God What I'm Scared. They wanted to do kind of like Saturday Night Live inspired bits like the forgive matic But thanks to popular demand, silly songs with Larry were there to stay. Back to Bob and Larry, they do have another story of forgiveness called Larry's Lagoon, a parody of Gilligan's Island. Bob and Larry had a summer job of taking three-hour boat tours with the millionaire, his wife, and a professor. If you guys are wondering about the movie star and the other girl, they canceled. As they begin to sail, Bob goes back to check on the passengers, and Larry's in charge of the wheel. That is until he starts daydreaming about being a Russian icebreaker pilot, freeing two whales trapped in ice. When Bob checks back on Larry, they crash their boat into a big old boulder. Which causes everyone to be super mad at Larry for smashing the boat and ruining the vacation for the passengers and sinking the boat as well. Um, I'm sorry? At least the boat is still floating. Oh. After creating has to sleep in, Bob pretty much vents out his anger and frustrations onto Larry. Even going as far as seeing a simple apology isn't good enough, causing Larry to do what I always do when I'm upset because someone upset me. He means I'm not good enough. They all think I'm not good enough. I bet they'd be happier if I just left. Hello, negative thoughts and emotions and darkness, my old friends. Larry then runs away feeling upset and worthless. 
Now, I never ran away from home before, but that's what I always felt like doing yeah. when that happened. Poor Larry just needs a hug. Goodbye, Bob. I hope you find a first mate that's good enough. The next morning, the millionaire and Lovey, what he calls his wife, talk about where Bob is. Then they see a talking tree asking where Larry is. But surprise! It's Bob the tree looking for Larry. Oh, look, Lovey, it's the skipper! Oh, I didn't know tomato grew on trees. Well, actually, oh, never mind. The professor comes along with a catapult to fling them back home. Honestly, I don't think it works that way. But a demonstration, if you please, professor. You wind it up. Then someone sits here, say, Bob, for example. Now, just pull this cord and... A hose! Ow. Oh, dear. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's... That's bad. With everyone now mad at each other, the professor apologizes to Bob, and Bob apologizes to the millionaire and Lovey, and everyone forgives each other. Then they realize the error of their ways. Boy, if I said I was sorry for doing something wrong and, and really meant it, and people still wouldn't forgive me, I'd feel just terrible. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, Larry said he was sorry for smashing the boat. And that was just an accident too. Just like when I hit you with that coconut, or when you fell through their roof. And we wouldn't forgive Larry at all. And they also have in search for Larry, luckily enough to find him before he sails away. As Larry comes back, he explains he's leaving because he thinks everyone hates him. But then they explain their faults and apologize for staying mad at Larry for his mistakes. And Larry forgives them, and they all forgive each other again. Then a singing palm tree named Palmy, voiced by the late Jeff Morrow, whom you may or may not recognize as a smacker's frog. R.I.P. Mr. Morrow. May you rest in peace. Pardon me if I'm wrong, if he's still alive or not. Palmer then sings the Forgiveness song. Probably a fan favorite within this episode, more or less. Yeah. Well, at least we're all friends again. Hey, has anybody seen the professor? Wait, where's the professor? Oh, there he is! He made a bamboo coconut helicopter. Nice touch. Very creative, I must say, professor. With that, everyone heads for home. The end, but not before the second verse. Bamboo, bamboo, bamboo. Ha, Larry. After a quick recap, the second verse is as follows. Forgive others as the Lord forgave you. Colossians 3.13b. And with that, the episode ends. Well, we're out of time for today, but remember, God made you special, and he loves you very much. Bye, bamboo. My final thoughts? Well, let's see. While the animation has some slight improvements in comparison to Where's God When I'm Scared, the episode itself was a slight downgrade when compared to the first episode. Where's God When I'm Scared had lessons and stories that were amazing and the lessons were pretty straightforward, but God Wants Me to Forgive Them was a bit of a jumble when it came to the lessons and the stories were, well, not as great as the firsts, but still relatively good in my opinion. Some Veggie fans even confuse God Wants Me to Forgive Them as a pilot and not Where's God What I'm Scared. And I can understand why. The lesson itself, at least for me, was a mix of how to forgive and not why to forgive and not just why. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but the lessons could have had a bit more of an explanation as to why we have to forgive. But learning about how and why to forgive is a good lesson. And about bamboo. The voice acting is still good. I remember liking this episode as a kid, but as an adult watching it now, it's a little confusing to me. Regardless, the episode wasn't all too great, but it was still fairly good in my opinion. As a rating, I'd give it a... Mm, 3.5 out of 5. Not good, but not great either but still enjoyable to look back on. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, cue the outro. RP is out. Bamboo! We are the grace of Ran. We'll never take a bath. It is our style to seldom smile and never laugh. We are the grace of Ran.
around, so stay up.